this interview will be uploaded into the website and the internet, uh -huh. they would love to know who you are. So please introduce. What is your name and where were you born when you were born? I was uh, born in Buffalo, Maryland. And March the 16th, 1932. 32. And tell me about your family what, at the time. Well, my mother had a TB, and she went to uh, Sevillesville Hospital. My father left us, and my grandmother raised seven mothers. And uh, another, actually, actually, I was only three years old when my father left me, so I didn't know, know him too much. And, uh, How about your sibling, your brother or sister? I got uh, four sisters and one brother. Oh. Anybody were in the military? Uh, my brother was in the Navy. In World War II, he was in the BRIP service that went out looking for submarines in the BRIPs. Okay, what were you doing when the Korean War broke out? When the Korean War broke out, I was had just joined the National Guards in 1949 in the 29th Division, 150, 15th Field Artillery Battalion in Westminster, Maryland. National Reserve? National Guard. Oh, National Guard, I'm sorry. In 1949. Right. right. Yeah. And when the Korean War broke out, mm -hmm. at that time I was working in Washington, D.C. as a produce salesman. Oh, what, what sales? And uh, we, well, we had all kind of produce, corn, never thinking. Onions. It was wholesale place what it was, and uh, so I, when the Korean War broke out, I tried to get in it, but the uh, captain said you're too young. Said you got to be 17, mm -hmm. and get your mother's permission, sign a paper, and I let you go. Mm -hmm. And I went to Fort Hood, Texas. Took two weeks basic advanced basic training. And I got orders to go to Germany, and them orders was cut. Said, no, you're artillery server, you're going to Korea. I said, where's Korea at? I ain't never heard of Korea. <laughs> you know. You wanted to go to Germany, but you were happened to be in Korea. <laughs> that's the life. Yep, that's the life in the Army. you got to go where they tell you. But they told me I was going to Germany. What was your specialty in the Army when you received the basic training? I was forward observer. Uh, forward, uh, forward observer. Right. That's a very dangerous job, isn't it? That is huh? pretty dangerous job. But one thing, I, you don't have many people bossing. You only get the entry captain telling you what to do. Mm. And, of course, you got to make all the patrols here with the entry and follow the entry. So I got in Korea on April the 15th, and I was on the second invasion of Seoul. That's when they had pushed them back. Then we went to Seoul. So you got arrived in Korea April 15th of 1951. 1951. Where did you arrive? I arrived at Incheon. Incheon. How, did you have any seasick? Did I have any way? Seasick. 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 No. I didn't get sick at all. Mm. But you were making pretty good money in the Washington, D.C. as a salesperson, right? Not really. <laughs> but $17 a week. When I joined the Army, I got $52 a month. That's why you joined the Army? Yeah. Oh, good. Why not, right? Right. Better uh, money. 
And I you want wanted to be in Germany so that you don't have to be killed, but I'm sorry that you ended up in Korea. <laughs> so uh, what did you say to yourself when you knew that you were going to go to Korea? Well, I didn't know where it was. I wasn't expecting, you know. I mean, I was artillery reserve and knew what my job was. And uh, when I got to Korea, I'll tell you the honest truth about it. The first night they shipped me from uh, inside up to next to Seoul, the first night one of the guys got killed, and I'll tell you the honest truth about it, I cried for three days. You see a person's leg broke off and stuff. I mean, I was only 18 years old, and my sergeant was a World War II sergeant, and he had been in Japan prison during World War II, and he helped me out. I mean, he told me, ball all you want to ball. Just get up there when they come and just hold the gun and pull the trigger. Don't even worry about it. And uh, so then I went from there. We went up to the Arn Triangle. Mm -hmm. And we took the Arn Triangle. Then we went from there to Pork Chop Hill. Mm -hmm. And I was up Port Chop Hill for, I would say, probably three weeks. And then they moved me over to Heartbreak Ridge. Oh. And I was on Heartbreak Ridge for, I don't know, maybe three or four months. And then I got hit on September 19th, 1951, by a landmine and killed the sergeant and corporal in front of me, and I took it through the legs, ribs, the head, and what saved my life was, was my radio on the back. And I laid out there, I don't know how long it was, but it probably was four or five hours before they got me in. I remember Chinese patrol was about 50 yards from me, when you when you ran out there, 18 years old, things going through your mind. What you do? You don't shoot yourself. I ain't gonna be a prisoner. That's for sure. It, it runs through your mind. But I was smart enough to let the patrol go by. They didn't see me, and I heard the bushes rattle. I eased over, and my radio uh, whispered, "Movie." Man, I, was, <laughs> I knew I was safe then, and I don't know if they drove me back or how they got me back, but I ended up in the uh, Willy Bird, they flew me to Japan, and I was there for two months, and I thought I was coming home, and the colonel said, no, you got to go back to Korea, they need FOs. I went back to Korea, and they sent me to Kumsam, uh, I think it was. And they sent me with the 2nd Korean Army as their FO. And I got up there, and I lieutenant said, well, I'm glad to see you. I said, oh, no, if you guys see me now, now, I don't want to be here. But he said, no, because you were my replacement. And I acted as a lieutenant then. And uh, I had an interpreter. His name was Kim Song. He could speak good English, and he called me Scosi Sergeant. He called Scosi Sergeant. I said, what's Scosi Sergeant? He said, look it, look it. And... Uh, I was up there with them for three months, and then I came home. I come back to the United States and went into the uh, uh, guided missile outfit. I stayed, I think it was about three weeks, and I was due for discharge. I re-enlisted and went, went to Japan. And I put three years in Japan and come back to the States. And I spent seven years altogether 
in the army and two years in the National Guard. The place where you were, Iron Triangle, Porkchop Hill, Heartbreak Ridge, all of those are the severe battleground right, and they, trench war, right? Right. They all uh, close, close together. Uh, it's, it's one of the most dangerous areas that the American soldiers were fighting. Right. Tell me about those. Tell me about the kind of uh, scene of and uh, how close with the enemies and what was your typical duties. I would say as close to the enemy we was was probably 300 yards. And I could do when they started cleaning the trenches out, when I was with the Koreans, we were supposed to not call artillery in only when we had six people in the open. And I'd call in every time they started cleaning the trenches out, the Chinese. I mean, they keep stopped anyhow. It, it's all, it, all a beautiful mountain, but it, I mean, it, it was all blowed up. The trees was all shot up from the artillery and everything. And uh, but I was, was when I was hit. Remember the mine going off or nothing. Uh, didn't hear the boom or nothing, you know. And uh, were they a really close encounter with the enemies? Oh yes. Tell me about it. Huh? Well, the Chinese, I mostly was, wasn't well, North Korean, most of the was Chinese. And I mean, they didn't come by 20, they come by the thousand. We lost, uh, I was the 223rd regiment, was with the 40th Division, and I think that night we lost 60 men. Was was killed in that battle. I received three, I received three battle stars. Where was it? That was at uh, Heartbreak Ridge. How many people were died? I think we had sixty killed oh. that night. America. You remember what day was? What date? Uh, it was before I uh, went to the hospital. Or it must have been uh, first part of September, I guess. Because I went to the hospital on the 19th of September. Can you tell me more detail how these six people were killed? Most of them was killed by the uh, rifle fire. What? Rifle fire. Rifle, uh, uh, Riding? Riding, yeah. So Chinese? The Chinese get bump guns, most of them was killed. See, we would think that's one thing about. I guess the North Korean probably dig all the trenches. They had good trenches. And it was hard for me. I st stood on the two sandbags to look over because I was so short. That's why you survived? Yeah. I guess the good Lord was with me. Are you Christian? Hi. Are you Christian? Yes. Did you pray at the time? Yes. Share that prayer with, with us. I just prayed for the good Lord. Just don't let him hit me. Don't let him hit me. Were you afraid? Damn right I was afraid. I was afraid for 18 months. I ain't, I ain't afraid to tell me. <laughs> tell me about how you sleep, how, what you eat, and those things. Uh, we had sea rations. We had uh, the canned sea rations or the pork and beans. Uh, ham lima beans, pas patty sausages, spaghetti, and uh, corned beef hash. They come in a can about that high, and they had a pack of cigarettes for uh, at meal. We had a cracker, and we also had a round bar of chocolate. That was a uh, make cocoa out of What was your favorite? My favorite was, was beans and, and franks. How, how did you sleep? 
<laughs> you didn't, not an F.O. We were, me and the F.O. party was supposed to be four people. Lieutenant, Sergeant, Corporal, P.F.C. Uh -huh. P.F.C. was a driver right. that, that came up. Uh, we never did have over three of us at the most. Sometimes it was just two of us. And we do two-hour shifts at night time. Mm -hmm. Daytime, I wasn't really that scared. But at night time, anything moved, we shot. There might not have been nothing there, but, but the movement of it, you know. Now I can tell by looking at your face that how fearful that should have been to you, right? Yes. So God, Lord, saved you. Well, I, let's put it this way. I was a kid when I went over there, and I think I came back as a man. What do you mean by man? I think I've grown up to be a man now. Any incidents in your forwarding, forward observing uh, mission that you either, you know, called the Chinese or... The Chinese kicked us off the hill on Hawkback one time. We went all the way back to the bottom of the hill and we took the hill back next day. And then Chinese back again? Yeah. They broke bugles. That's one thing I liked about them. We knew when they was coming. They sounded bugles off. And he sounded the third time, be ready for him. He was coming. The really the scaredest I was when I was at the second rock division that like I told uh, Kim Song, I can't tell you and North Korean apart. You both look the same. Yeah. We have the same nation. And uh, if you come in my OP, you holler my name. Because I would shot you. But I've been back to Korea two times. You went back to Korea 2008. Right, 2008. Yeah. yeah. What did you see there? Beautiful country. Beautiful. Tell me about it. All oh, high rises. I stayed at the uh, Rado Hotel, uh, Hotel, I guess it was. Yeah. And uh, we went all the way up to the 38th parallel. And we visited uh, all kind of places. Uh, one place I really liked was built, uh, they built, built back in 1400 or something, had their own guards there, had it all decked out and red and everything. It was about 15 buildings we went to see in that one place. I forget what they called it. Mm -hmm. And so were you proud of your service there? Yes, indeed. I'd go back tomorrow morning. <laughs> you can go back tomorrow morning? <laughs> yeah, go back tomorrow. I went back in 2011, too, and I seen more improvement in 2011. And uh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful the country. I'm glad that I went and fought for the country, and I think the world of the Korean people, they have really treated me good. Such a good thing came out of Korean War, but here in the United States, the war was forgotten. Why is that? Yes, we didn't get treated like we're supposed to in the, in the United States. The kids don't even know nothing about it today. I mean, they don't even teach it in schools. You know. What's the best way to teach our children about the war? The best way? They ought to have crashes on it books in the schools on it, like the new book that you all put out, the, uh, just got, you uh, Korea Reborn. Right. Any other message that you want to leave to this interview? 
but it is. I, I really thank the world of the Korean people for what they are doing for us today. It's no other country ever did anything for the American soldiers that, like the uh, Germany War and the rest of the wars that we've had. The war that you fought, especially in those area, Iron Triangle, Heartbreak Ridge, and Park Chop Hill, that those are the areas that the war was really concentrated. Right. And even though you were wounded, but still you are you survive and you look healthy. Right. Hmm? Thank you so much again for your fight. I appreciate you. Oh. Thank you.